Well, hello everybody. I'm here today to, to explain all about the fixed layout ebook format, the EPUB 3 fixed layout. Now, um, we have to go through a number of things here to talk about the actual structure. So I'm going to first of all show you uh, a diagram that explains the structure of both the reflurable and the fixed layout. Then we're going to have a look at some code to see um, what we actually get inside the, um, the, the EPUB itself. And then we're going to have a look at an example and, uh, and just see how that works and see how we are actually changing something um, you know, in the raw state. I mean, eventually we're going to then get on to InDesign and how we can use InDesign to build a more sophisticated EPUB fixed layout. But first of all, we really need to analyse and understand the, uh, the, the, the way that the actual format works. OK, so let's go over to the diagram then and see, uh, have a look there to hopefully explain to you the actual structure of the document. So here we have um, the reflurable ebook then to begin with. Um, I think I've shown this diagram a number of times before, but essentially um, you just have to understand that it is a package. It's a sort of a box, if you like, with various components inside it. Uh, the most important thing really is this folder here. Um, this is actually OEBPS, the name of the folder, but it doesn't have to be named that, but uh, that's how it, uh, how it has uh, worked out in this particular case. Um, there are various elements in here which need to uh, some explanation, but they, it would become a lot clearer when we actually look at the code inside the, uh, the, the the file itself. Okay, so first of all, we have to have a table of contents. Um, the reason that we have um, two versions of the table of contents is the NCX file is there, there for backwards compatibility if your device only supports EPUB 2. So the table of contents, um, as you can see uh, in the other format, is also an HTML document. I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, then we also have a, a, a file which explains all of the content. It actually has the metadata of the book. It has um, a, a list of all the assets inside the book. We're going to dig into that again in a moment. Now, the reflowable ebook also contains a cover HTML document. And then for each chapter, you also would have um, typically an HTML document. A word about the HTML itself. Now, you can see here that the files are named or labeled .xhtml. That's because they are actually XML or in syntax, uh, syntax point of view, they are XML. So they're, they're using HTML, but it's, it's using the syntax of XML. Very, very particular. And again, you'll see when we dig into it, um, there'll be some aspects of it will be familiar to you if you've done uh, HTML work. Um, but there's just one or two things to bear in mind about that. OK, now these uh, documents, if we were to open chapter one, for example, in a web browser, then you'd be just simply scrolling down. It's a long scrolling document, presumably. Um, when we use the book software, the ebook software, such as Apple Books, um, then that software will actually, uh, you know, help you see see the content, you know, one screen at a time, um, because the software itself divides it up, if you like. But at the heart of it is a long scrolling document, effect, effectively. That's why it's the reflurable. OK, now we have a style sheet inside a folder called CSS. We have images inside of another folder and we can also embed fonts in the whole document. All right, let's have a look now at the fixed layout ebook. Uh, same sort of structure. However, we only have one um, table of contents. We don't need anything to do with backwards compatibility because if you have a device that only supports EPUB 2, then you, you, you can't see the EPUB uh, fixed layout anyway. Um, we then, the main difference though, as you can see, is we've got pages uh, rather than chapters. And, and, and I've just put five pages in here, but you know, a fixed layout ebook might have hundreds of uh, pages because actually every single page has to be its own discrete HTML document. The other difference is that we don't have um, an HTML document specifically for the cover. We actually have to have that in its own separate image. And as you can see in a moment, we actually have to point to that. 
Okay, which brings me to the next part uh, of this talk, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over an example fixed layout ebook in sort of code, if you like. So if you can see over on the left hand side, this is the whole project. So you'll see um, how we have here the folder called OABPS, and inside that we have a CSS folder, we have uh, an images folder, we have a cover, we have uh, another image. Now what I want to show you first of all, um, before we explore the HTML, I'm just gonna show you the content.opf file. This is probably one of the most important aspects of this because um, this is where, if you like, you know, things are switched on and off uh, depending on what we actually have. So, <clears throat> very uh, important metadata. So, this whole section here is to do with the metadata of the book, including the title. Um, it actually includes the language that's being used, um, the date, of course and a very uh, particular uh, identifier, the book ID. Now that normally would be the ISBN if you're publishing this. We also have some very particular things for the fixed layout options, as you can see here. We have to say whether we're going to the rendition of the, what the rendition of this is. So pre-paginated is what we mean. When we say pre-paginated, we mean that this is fixed layout. That, that, that switches on fixed layout. OK, now it so happens that you can actually have fixed layout in various or uh, two different orientations. We can have portrait, we can have landscape. Uh, and also what we can do is we can take um, two pages and turn them into a spread. In this particular example I've got here, there are single pages and they are landscape format. So we don't have to worry about the spread. <clears throat> now, you can see here that we have um, in this manifest section down here, this is where we have to identify all of the assets within the book. So every single file, every single image, every single font, everything has to be listed in this section. Uh, not only is it listed, but it also uh, identifies the type. So for example, here we have the cover image. So I'm just gonna highlight that block there. So that, that there is saying, OK, the ID is cover JPEG, but the actual file itself is called cover.jpg, and it's inside a folder called image. The media type is image JPEG. But very particularly, the properties, one of the properties of this, uh, or the, proper, the, the specific property of this, is that it is the cover image. So when we actually open the book or when we see this in our library, um, whatever software we're using, you're going to actually see uh, the cover. And that cover is, of course, identified in the image folder, telling us where it is. Then in this particular document, we've got two pages, two HTML pages. Uh, there's, there's the first one, home, I've called it home. And then the second one is, is page one. The table of contents is also has to be listed can see it there that has a very particular property which is called nav so the properties you know attribute if you like is nav for that particular uh, asset and then we have um, style style sheet we're listing uh, and then any images that we're using in the book um, also have to be listed okay now what about this now th the thing is that we actually have uh, these documents these HTML documents which I'm going <coughs> to look at in a moment but they are listed in the order in which they are read so we first of all we have um, the home document now you can see the item reference that the ID reference is simply one word home which is referenced up here home so what we are referencing is what is listed in the meta in the manifest. Just a word about linear equals no. Now this actually doesn't have any um, function in this particular book because we've only got one extra. We, we've got, got two pages, and so that doesn't really uh, do anything. But essentially, it's possible to have pages in the book which are not part of the flow. Uh, and so you can have a link to a document or sorry, a link to a page 
but that page is only brought onto the screen, if you like, uh, by a link rather than being in the flow of the document. For backwards compatibility, we also have something called the guide. Um, and, that, and that's really only if you're going to convert this to some other format. So it's not really that essential. OK, uh, a couple of other things. I should just have a look at the table of contents. Now, the table of contents is quite simply HTML, um, but a very specific uh, bit of code in here. We actually say that this is, has a type, an EPUB type of talk. So it's a navigation block, if you like. Um, and, we, and it's an ordered list. There's the ordered list. We also have something called landmarks, which again is something that is only specifically used by certain software, but it is uh, again a part of the EPUB standard to have a landmark section, um, which is just down here. Now there's one particular thing that's going on in here, and that is we've got um, uh, the iBooks uh, reader software is actually identifying this as the start page. So when you first open this book, this will be where the book will start which of course is at the beginning of the, uh, of, of the, of the book. OK, um, we also do have a page list. Uh, again, that's not really used um, in this particular software that we're going to be showing the book, but it is an important aspect for uh, accessibility and so on. Let's have a look at the HTML and the CSS um, that goes to build up this uh, ebook in fixed layout format. First of all, um, I've got the home document. That's the, the, the opening page, if you like. Um, and let's just go through a few things. Now, um, we do actually have uh, this line at the top, which is not what you're going to necessarily find in a standard HTML page uh, as you're browsing through the web, because that's what defines it as XML. So we're basically saying this is HTML. Yes, it is HTML, but it's uh, according to the XML rule set. Uh, syntax has to be very particular. So that line at the top is uh, a, a different line from what you would normally find on the web, actually. The namespace, XML namespace, um, is what you would normally find, except there is an extra thing here, which is to do with the EPUB. Um, and then also we have very particular, in this case, you'll see later on as we get more in depth into this, we've actually added a, 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 a something for iBooks on the Apple devices so that we can do things like add um, music or, 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 or ambient sound in our book. OK, now um, the style sheet uh, is uh, defined here, but let's first of all look at this line here. So viewport, the viewport is set to having a width and a height. Now, the actual dimensions in there are not as crucial as the proportions. Now, um, pr the proportion that we're actually using uh, means that when we display this on an iPad, for example, it's going to show the full content on the iPad. That viewport width has to be present in every single HTML document in this book, in, in other words, every single page. But then also in the uh, style sheet, which we find over here, we have the body that reflects or mirrors that um, uh, uh, dimension. So the width and the height also has to be present in the body. Um, we've then got a, a wrapper, which is inside the body, and that has a width of 100% with a position of fixed. So it means that everything within the body, if you, effectively, because this is the, the, the only um, uh, um, ancestor, if you like, of the body. And that actually has um, a width of 100% with a position of fixed and a top position and a left position of zero. So in other words, it's anchored top left. OK, and of course, I don't mean uh, the ancestor. Um, it's actually the child of the body. I, I, I said that wrong. OK, so the image inside it is also has a, a width for the particular full image. So if we look at this home page again, you'll see that we actually have uh, the wrapper and inside that wrapper is an image just right there. That image is also an anchor or a link. So what we're going to do now is to have a look at um, the book that we've just been um, previewing with the code. We're going to look at this using Apple iBooks. 
So here is my iBooks library, Apple Books library. I'm just going to open my Life of Shakespeare. Um, and as you can see, it just opens with the first page or a page. This is a landscape uh, document. And I just, I can, I've actually set it up, as I explained just a moment ago, that I've made this into a link. So we just click that and it takes us to the page for the text. Now, um, obviously, this is just a very simple example of two pages. So we can go back to that. Uh, we can also look at the table of contents, which is, again, just two single pages, page one and page two. We're moving on to the next phase. So I'm going to leave this one here and we're going to record a new episode. And in that episode, we're going to have a look at adding further content to this hand built fixed layout ebook. And I'm also going to show you what this is all about. What is this little gizmo up here where it says devices? Why do we have that? More on that in the next episode.